Okay, video three, perspective number three. What if I told you that the way you built your dashboard would fundamentally change the cost to run that dashboard? It sounds like a really crazy concept because from that you'll evaluate that probably what that will mean is people will build their charts differently to try and save on costs. And the minute you do that, you start to decouple this idea of viz best practice from actual best practice, because best practice will suddenly turn into, how do I make things cheaper? This transition is taking place and it's about to hit the Tableau ecosystem in a big way. And I think this is going to be felt the most through the way Tableau Next works. And so in this video, I want to explain this transition, not to say that it's wrong, but to say that it's been happening for some time, at least as far as I know, the last five years, and I want to sort of slowly step you through how this has happened and why it's going to hit like a truck when it finally lands in the Tableau Next ecosystem. And it's not really Salesforce's fault in this particular instance, although I'll explain that it's probably something they should be aware of and, and realize they need to soften the blow a little bit. So let's start first with this idea around pricing. Now, the, the heritage of Tableau pricing, I'm not a pricing expert, as I've said already, but... If I just slowly sort of uh, reveal parts of this diagram, you'll see that Tableau has always in the past worked on this concept of seats and cores, right? So you bought um, seats or licenses, and you sent them out to users, and for your server, you bought cores, compute power, and that was it. Once you did that, you could shove as many people onto that resource as you wanted and get it across the organization as, uh, as easily as you wanted. Yes, it cost you effort and time to get that to work smoothly, but really, you kind of had fixed costs once you'd bought that you could renew your license at the end of the year and know that other than adding licenses or inflation it was basically going to cost you the same in real terms to run the same solution it doesn't matter how you know many queries you ran how many dashboards were loaded on as long as your server could handle the load you were broadly fine and then the concept of cloud computing came in. AWS started to make cloud computing more ideal. And then you saw Tableau Online, and then that got rebranded to Tableau Cloud. You even saw concepts such as web authoring come into the fray. And so the crazy thing about this is that this was a very soft transition. And it was really presented as a convenience thing. So uh, allowing Tableau to manage your solutions for you. And that would save you costs because they had all the staff and the people to do this well. You didn't. And it also enabled small organizations to have products like Tableau because they didn't need to have an IT back office. They just needed to know a URL and who the admin was. And that was it. They could get started with Tablet in minutes. And to this day, this is still the fastest way to get started with Tablet. And it's a good thing. Then we're moving to this world now where I'll just delete this diagram where consumption has come into place. And this has been like a slow but quietly simmering thing inside of Tablet Cloud. You've had the concept of consumption through something called Prep Conductor initially. You used to have to get credits essentially to run this at varying levels. And so you had a base number of credits available to you. And then after a while, those credits would run out and you'd need to sort of purchase additional credits. And there've been various add-ons and components to Tableau that have broadly touched on this concept of consumption. So the more you use, the more you pay. And in the Salesforce world, Einstein Analytics had this sort of consumption component already bolted onto it. And with the launch of AI tools everywhere, you've seen consumption be the thing that everything is priced on because those queries to the AI models cost money. And so the idea is that every query you send to an AI tool is going to have a cost. And so this idea of consumption has come to the fore. And what that really pins itself on is this term that I'm gonna call cost per query. Now remember that, because we'll come back to it. Now, when I had a think about this, I was thinking, where have I seen this before? And of course I have, in databases. So if we go over to the world of Snowflake, You'll know that they charge um, for um, data in a very sort of interesting way. They charge you for compute and storage and everything else is essentially free. There is a little bit of a margin on, on the cost to operate the platform, but you kind of see that in the consumption. So I have a Snowflake account. I'm a Snowflake customer. I pay for that. I pay roughly $100 a month. And what I use that for is the demo data sets to do all the stuff that I do. And I actually use it to store my YouTube data. So it's actually quite a nice 
thing. Now, the great thing about it is that I mostly just pay for storage because I rarely use the data. And when I do need to use the data, um, it spins up a warehouse. That's what I get charged for. I get a small warehouse and then it runs a query. And so what you see here is essentially the benefit of doing that. You see, if I had to stand up a database, I would essentially have a fixed cost and a fixed capacity. And when I'm not using it, I have to keep that capacity running. I have to keep those resources running. And I also have to employ a team to run those resources. But the problem then comes is when I have a surge in demand, I, I can't just easily increase the resources. So Snowflake came about and Databricks as well and introduced this idea of consumption in a, in a very interesting way in that they allowed you to scale up and scale out your resources. Scaling up is essentially making them faster. Scaling out is essentially adding more nodes and more compute capacity. So scaling out is good if you want a, a lot of sort of simultaneous queries to be happening. And scaling up is a good way of increasing the through or increasing the speed of what's going on. Nonetheless, your saving kind of came in this uh, you know, orange area here where you weren't using so much of it and so you're not actually paying for that. And that's essentially where your saving came in. Obviously, you have these surges where you do pay a bit more than you'd be paying and the marginal cost probably is a little bit higher compared to owning the resource. But generally speaking, you shouldn't have as many surges if you size your resources correctly. So that's in itself a component of Snowflake and understanding how that works. And so this diagram kind of helps to explain that. And so it's broadly made sense. But here's the thing. You see, if we think about this for one second, in the past, your your pricing has been has been something that has lived in multiple places. So to, to, to just show you this, I just want to bring out like a new area here. So I'll just call this like, I'll just bring out like a, um, a text box here and we'll just call this um, uh, Tableau, okay? So you've had this, um, you know, Tableau uh, license. Imagine this uh, text here is the Tableau invoice. So you've got this invoice that comes from Tableau. We'll, we'll give this a nice little diagram, okay? So you've got your Tableau invoice. It's essentially what you pay to use the Tableau platform, okay? And then before that, if you were connecting to Snowflake, you'd have a Snowflake invoice, right? Okay, so you have um, Snowflake. Okay, I should have made this ahead of time, but nonetheless, we can do this quickly. And um, you might also have, let's say, uh, maybe AI credits that you were using. So you may be using Claude or Anthropic, okay? And on top of that, you might have also had some other sort of um, relevant costs like related to running the service. But let's just say this was your data stack, Snowflake. Um, let's also add DBT because you know if you're using semantic models, you, you'd, you'd, be, you'd be running an instance of that as well. So let's just get this out here and just type in DBT. Okay, so you're using a bunch of analytics tools and services. And at the moment, what you can basically sort of surmise from this is that yeah, your analytics team would see this invoice, right? And this 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 makes a lot of sense. Um, Snowflake uh, typically tends to sit within an IT team because databases tend to be managed centrally. So your IT team would see that invoice. Um, Claude would probably be in the IT budget, and maybe probably, and then um, a DBT would probably sit in sort of the analytics um, budget here. So. Um, this is sort of like a, an interesting landscape. Now, I will add another component to this, which is very pertinent for Tableau Next, which is that was this, the, the Salesforce bit, so Salesforce and the Salesforce uh, budget probably doesn't sit in either of those. It probably sits in like what I would call the marketing budget because it's a CRM tool. So it's really about sort of activating and targeting your customers. So your probably your CMO would probably look after the Salesforce budget and they'd be paying for that capability because it enables them to sell and reach to their customers. So in this world, three different organizations were getting an invoice to run an analytics platform. And in the world that Tableau Next is proposing, <laughs> all of these come from Salesforce, <laughs> right? And this is really the, the, the game. I, the, the bit that's not on here is data cloud. Obviously, this customer doesn't use data cloud, but what you would do is you would, if you were gonna sort of convert this into the Tableau Next paradigm, you'd drag these all down here and you would add a component of a data cloud right about here. So let's just drag this here and data cloud. Uh, I, I copied the wrong thing. <laughs> let's just do let's just do that and let's very quickly type this in. 
so data cloud I'll just put data C okay so there's data cloud and um, I, I don't know where this would sit but analytics would probably look after this because it's kind of related to Tableau so in this new world Snowflake is still going to be going to IT but Salesforce really want to be if I sorry I just knock the mic so sorry if you heard the feedback Salesforce really wants to be um, this person here so Salesforce want to be the one invoicing you for all of this okay and that's that's a super interesting proposition because before you were just seeing the invoice from Tableau and so you maybe had a, a value and a net worth related to analytics but when you see the invoice from Salesforce and you look at wow this is what it's going to cost to run the dashboard then it becomes a slightly different proposition. The numbers suddenly looks bigger and you're having to foot the entire cost. And maybe your organization isn't set up for that. It's not ready for that transition. It's not ready to see that invoice in that way. And actually to get this invoice in this way, a bunch of other people need to be involved. Maybe IT needs to be involved in the Tableau discussion for the first time because of data cloud, because of the way it touches AI. And so it's a really interesting shift that I think is about to happen. And then the second shift, the second really important twist here is that because of Salesforce owns this whole entire uh, model, because they also want to put a consumption pricing model on top of it, it makes the way you work with dashboards very, very different. And so if I go to the right here, what I've done is I've just taken a very simple explanation. This is actually very similar to how Salesforce themselves talk about uh, dashboards in the Tableau Next world. I've got a dashboard with four charts and 10 users want to go and use it and they typically run five interactions every time they're on it so they'll go and change a filter they'll click on something they'll change a filter they'll click on something else and then they'll maybe go click on another tab they'll review it and then they're done that's essentially five interactions okay but in the consumption world each activity is a chargeable event and and the four charts themselves are a multiplier because each four of those charts generates a slightly different query and in the Tableau Next world, everything connects to data cloud in real time. There is no concept of an extract in data cloud just yet. And Tableau Next definitely doesn't have that concept. So it's connecting to everything in real time all the time. And um, there, there is a concept of caching, but I'm not sure it's the same concept of caching that we're used to in the Tableau desktop and, and Snowflake world. So if we just fast forward this a little bit, you use loads of dashboard, user clicks, you get tooltips, you do all of these things here in the query pipeline and then it comes all the way back. All of these things are happening in the background constantly. They're just lots and lots of activities. It works out as about 500 individual events just for that one dashboard for 10 users, five interactions in one day. 500 activities and then on top of that you've got to add alerts and subscriptions and there's a ton more there. And so I'm just not sure the community or Tableau users in general or people who buy Tableau are ready for this shift. If you've come from the Salesforce world, you're already familiar with this because this is how consumption has already been priced into some parts of Salesforce. If you're coming from Einstein Analytics, this isn't new. But we go back to that idea of what is a dashboard worth. To be able to sit there and tell your manager that actually your dashboard could cost more this month because it's Christmas versus last month because it's not so busy it's it, it's a very sort of strange thing and i'm not sure we've really reckoned with the impact that has on how you will build a dashboard because that will lead to behavior around choosing more optimal simpler charts so you don't generate as many queries and at that point you decouple this best practice from the capability of the tool it becomes a priority to build more efficient cheaper dashboards when cost is an imperative thing and you might say well if companies value the dashboards and the outputs then they'll spend the money and you say that but we all live in sort of really tough economic times globally and analytics teams will do what they need to do to survive to justify you know the budgets they have and defend uh, their purpose within an organization and if sometimes cutting costs is the way to do that then that is what they will do it's why companies look at Power BI. It's why companies look at other platforms because they're trying to save on the bottom line. And so I'm not here to put forward an answer, but I think I think as, as, as users, 
we need to start answering this question. What does this query cost? And we need to do that with our dashboards today so that when we see Tableau Next, when we see the price and when we start to do some modeling, we can actually do a comparison and say, hey, this is this is the right price for this dashboard. Or even better, be able to compare the value that is derived from a dashboard against the cost. That's really what we're trying to do to be able to say, hey, this is worth doing because even though it's costing us 50, 60,000 pounds a year to run these dashboards, it's worth it because they generate millions or tens of thousands worth more of better revenue. I'm not sure dashboard is worth that much, but maybe I'm wrong. You let me know in the comments below. Right, we've covered a range of topics. The next one will be on Tableau next. I'll do this over the weekend. I won't do it tomorrow because it's the weekend. So I'll do it over the weekend. I'll have a think about it and we'll put it up in the next couple of days. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.